Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. <laughs> Hello, Sid Roth here with David Herzog. And David is known as someone that has launched into a realm called the glory realm. And the glory realm is the presence of God with such a tangible presence that it's almost like you could reach your hand if your hand is uh, missing a, a, a thumb, let's say. You reach your hand in that glory realm and the thumb would grow out. It's the, the most wonderful things happen when you enter that glory realm. You see, when you speak words, they have an influence on everything, but it's slow. I mean, it could be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years before these words come to pass. But if you speak words in the glory realm, it's instant. Now, David, you have had people that are bald get their hair back. You have had people uh, that lose instant weight loss. How many pounds? is the maximum that someone has lost. We had a guy in uh, Jackson, Tennessee, lose 70 pounds in one meeting. 70, 70 pounds? pounds. That, that's almost hard. I mean, that, he was almost not there anymore. <laughs> no, well, he was still there because he was still pretty heavy. But, but still, he lost huge. He ran around. I said, someone here, you're about to lose a lot of weight. Get out of your seat and run. The guy takes off running. It's like a Mack truck was coming mm. through the room. Everyone moved out of the way. And he, when he grabbed his pants, it was so much space in between, he weighed himself. 70 pounds. He had another guy, 60 pounds, but then a few weeks later, he went to get his trucking license, had to get a physical, and by the time he had lost a 60, four weeks later, he had lost actually 100. They said, no, sir, you've lost now 100 pounds, so it kept going off after the first weight loss. Well, I've been at one of your meetings, and before my eyes, I saw a woman's hair change color. Uh, why do these such unique things happen in your ministry? Well, I noticed one thing. I asked the Lord years ago, Lord, how come we don't see more creative miracles? Everyone's mm -hmm. in a healing ministry, but where are the body parts being recreated? And God told me, because my people don't see me as the creator, they don't preach me as the creator, I don't manifest creative miracles. That if they would see me not just as the healer, but as the creator, that I'm still the creator, I would manifest as creator. If we would see him as creator, worship him as creator, and preach him as creator, he'll confirm that word with the company of creative miracle signs. Well, uh, as you and I were discussing before we went on the air, the glory realm is like the highest realm of God. I want to find out how David got into that glory realm. Uh, you and your wife, Stephanie, graduate Bible college, mm -hmm. and you both have the same vision. Tell me about it. Yeah, I met my wife, and we were going to get married, and we both had the exact vision to go to France, which is amazing. You know, who wants to go to France, right, besides vacation? So she says, I'm called to France. I'm supposed to minister there. So I said, so am I. And so long story short, we go there. Wait, how much money did you have? Not a few hundred dollars, maybe. Not much money. Uh, that's, uh, I've been using <laughs> this word a lot lately. You should know it by now. That's chutzpah. <laughs> that's Jewish nerve. Okay, that's Meshuggah, too. <laughs> well, that's crazy. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and we go over there, and, you know, nothing was working for us. The first year, it was hard. No one was getting saved. There was no money. And then I fasted for three days, which is pretty easy to do with no money, <laughs> like a forced fast, you know. Right. So I fast. I say, God, how do I win this country, this nation, this, this continent? And he shows me Romans 11. He said, if you will reach my people, the Jewish people, and Israel, I will give you the nations. Paul was called to Europe, to the Roman Empire, and God says, here's your key to reach Rome. Reach the Jew first, and I'll give you the Roman Empire. Okay, so you and your wife uh, leave wasn't too difficult, France, because you had nothing going for you, no money. You go to Israel, and you wind up in, of all places, the upper room. What happened there? I get in the upper room, and we're worshiping God, and I get knocked out by the power of God on the floor. I'm weeping uncontrollably, and an African-American girl from our team prophesies to me and says, Now today, your ministry begins. And I'm thinking, No, I've ministered before. But in the Lord's eyes, it's to the Jew first. Now you're touching Israel for the first time. Now your ministry begins. It's like in heaven, it was like everything before that was practiced, but now it's serious because you're touching my people. And we led 13 people to the Lord on that trip. Okay, so now you and your wife, Stephanie, return to France yes. where you have no money, nothing going for you, and what happens? We go to France. We're there for about a month or two. Then we go to Toronto, and we go to some crazy meeting where people are getting touched and crying and laughing. 
And I thought it was a little weird. But I got prayer. I left. And suddenly this new anointing comes on my life. People are getting healed, saved. Demons are coming out. And the joy is hitting them. People are just full of joy uncontrollably wherever we go. And that lasts for a couple years. Then we keep hitting multiple revivals. Then a holiness revival breaks out. I show up in a church and unsaved people and believers run up to be saved. Such conviction and a six-month revival breaks out. What, what actually occurred in France as a result of that catalyst of going to Israel first the same way Paul went to Rome first? Yeah, because the Lord said, because you reach my people Israel, I'm going to give you now the nation you're in. I get back to France. Within a couple weeks, I'm in this new move of God for five years nonstop. Every week, doors are opening, signs of wonders, salvations, immediately from nothing to full-blown, like I'm like one of the top five evangelists in the country now. And then ending in the fifth year in a six-month revival, the longest-running revival in 50 years, just from one trip to Israel where we got Jewish people saved. What type of miracles did you see during that period? Huh, during that revival, I remember the first weekend, a girl was picked up off the floor, 13 centimeters off the floor. What Some would call it she levitated. I just call it she arose, Isaiah 60. She was weeping for souls, and she people saw her lift you know, off by, the By the way, anything in the New Age is a counterfeit. You can't have a counterfeit unless you have the authentic. And what David is talking about is the authentic. Yeah, so this girl is praying and weeping for souls, and she lifts up off the ground, 13 centimeters off the ground. I guess someone had a ruler or something. They mm -hmm. measured it. No, but it was about 13 centimeters. And she flipped over like a pancake in the air, came back to the ground. And people around her freaked out. A few of them took off running. But others were just amazed. It was a very special time. When she went down, souls ran up to be saved. Just French people running up, yeah, weeping. You see, these signs and wonders don't just happen for uh, no reason. There's a reason behind it. It's for people to see a demonstration of the kingdom of God and then want to know the king. I want you to move in such signs and wonders. I want you to move in the glory realm. Be right back after this word. It's, I think, it, you know what? It's still growing right now. Put the camera on his head. The hair is growing right now. You're watching hair growing right now as we speak. <laughs> we'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with David Herzog. We're talking about entering the most wonderful realm, the glory, the manifest presence of God. I love that realm. It, it, it's more important to be in that realm uh, than anything this world has to offer. And so David, despite all the wonderful things he was seeing, he was hungry for more of God. Uh, that's what happens when you get in this realm. You, you just can't get enough of God's presence. And so uh, a mutual friend of ours, Ruth Heflin, mm -hmm. was known as someone that would sing and get people to enter the glory. Uh, so you went to her camp to learn more. And what happened? Yeah, after the six-month revival, I was so hungry for even more of God's glory. And God told me, go to Ruth and go to her meeting. So I show up there on January, I think it was the first or second, 1999. And I'm there to receive. And she says to me, oh, David, glad to meet you. I heard about you. I want you to preach tonight. I said, oh, no, no, no. I've been preaching for six months straight. I came to receive what you have. She goes, no, I'm a prophetess of God. God told me you're supposed to speak tonight. I had no desire whatsoever to speak. I wanted to receive something fresh. So I go and I obey. I mean, she's a prophetess of God. God tells her. So I go to speak. And when I'm on the pulpit to preach, the power of God hits me. The glory of God hits me in a way I've never had before, I end up singing two chapters of the Bible. Well, you, did you read it and sing it? I, or I was singing, from... it was my message was Isaiah 60. I end up singing Isaiah 60 and 61 as my message. As I was singing in the power of the Holy Spirit, completely in this euphoric glory, the power of God started hitting the place, healings, deliverances, signs and wonders started happening. It was like, and I felt like I was on cloud nine, like I had died and went to heaven. The level of glory I felt that stayed with me all week from that one night was just so out of this world. I said, God, I, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to go for the glory of God. That's maybe my main message. Above miracles, above anything else, I want your glory, Lord, because this is like I feel so close to you. I had known the glory, but I didn't realize that level of the glory. There's different levels of it. 
where I thought I had known it, and okay, the glory, mm -hmm. the anointing, goosebumps, and electricity, fire, but this was different. It was such intimacy. It's like I was in heaven on earth. I can't explain it. <laughs> You've explained it. <laughs> you, you, you know, David, I've been in your home, and I've met your, your wife and your, your daughters, and you, uh, you are a blessed man. Uh, but Thank one you. of your daughters, who, I, who happens to be at this TV shoot, her name is Glory, and there was something very unusual about her when she was born. True. After that Ruth Heffin thing, about four months later, my daughter was born. And the word was, she will be a sign and a wonder. So we kept that word, and God gave the name Glory to my wife for her, Shannon Glory. So we're in the hospital, and the baby comes out. And it's amazing, I didn't feel a thing when that baby came out. I had no pain whatsoever. Now that's a joke. You can laugh. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about what you're, what you're about ready to and say. And my wife is so faithful. At every birth of every child, she's been right by my side. She's so good. So we're there. Are you changing your profession? You're going to become a comedian? <laughs> or are you a poet and don't even know it? No, I'm just teasing. Go ahead. <laughs> you're good. So the baby comes out, and they clean the blood, and they look, these French doctors, and she's covered in gold. Gold, whatever you want to call it. Gold, glory dust, gold dust. She's covered in gold. And she had no makeup kit in her womb at birth. She didn't have a little makeup kit in her pocket. Of course. She's born covered in gold. And at that point, I was kind of like, okay, I'm not skeptical about the gold, but I'm not excited about it. I just want souls. I don't understand it. What does it have to do with anything? Where is it in the Bible? All I know is my daughter was full of gold, and the glory of God was so thick in the operating room, in the, in the an operating room, in the uh, maternity ward. And the Lord began speaking to me, saying, don't limit any of my signs and my glory because I want to touch people with signs and wonders. Speaking of signs and wonders, he was recently in Sri Lanka. And uh, what happened to that uh, Buddhist priest? Well, we had a lot of people come in Sri Lanka. You know, they had a 30-year war. The war ended. And this is one of the first meetings where so many souls unsaved came into the meetings. And we had every kind of, from government leaders, mafia, underworld people, a lot of religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Muslims, uh, kind of gurus that move in the supernatural, other supernatural. Sounds like a picnic. <laughs> oh, it was really exciting. Uh, and this guy, a Buddhist priest, front row. They, Buddhist priests do not go to meetings where Jesus is preached. It just doesn't happen. So why they come? Because they didn't know it was a Christian meeting. Oh, okay. Because the billboards that were put out just said, do you believe in miracles? Come. That's all it said. Nobody knew. So they all come. Front row, he's just excited, and he, I forgot what his sickness was. He was sick with something, and he, got, he had gotten healed. And when it came Jesus time for the altar call, people rushing to be saved, and he received the Lord. That, and that caused quite a stir in the city. Everyone started talking about the Buddhist priest came up to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. So it caused some controversy, but it caused a lot more people to come that were Buddhist and Hindu to check out what God was doing. I want to take a look at a Buddhist woman that was... Uh, had a great miracle, and you watch this and tell me whether you feel in your heart this is authentic. And you have to be a Bissell Meshuggah, a little crazy, not to realize how authentic this is. Two months back, there was in my uh, this side. Whenever I look at things, there was a white flash or something. A white flash. Was it like a cataract? All the time, uh, Some kind of spot? Yeah, it Spots, was like cataract, a spot or something. Or something. Yeah. something was but blocking her vision. My husband wanted me to go and check it, but I was too scared to go to a doctor because I don't want to know the bad news or something. I don't know. Yeah. But now, when you were saying the eyes, I just, and then my husband was praying, holding me. Wow, and it opened up. And when I opened it out, it's gone. She opened her eyes, and the spots are gone. And yeah, I'm a Buddhist. You're Buddhist. See, God loves Buddhists. She's a Buddhist who follows Jesus now, but her eyes have been healed tonight. I believe in him. I have to admit that. It's his miracles. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with David Herzog. And David... Uh, there's some new things that are happening in the glory realm. People with metal rods in their back and other things. Tell me what's going on. Yeah, we're seeing quite a few people now. They got metal plates, metal rods, uh, screws and pins, nails that the doctors put in their body completely disappear, dissolve, or turn back to bone where it's just not there. Just creative miracles like that that God's doing. And, and blind people? Yeah, blind eyes. Blind eyes opening, uh, people that could not see either one eye or both eyes completely eyes opening up. 
We had we just had a trip to Asia last year, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia. Each of those countries, we had blind eyes open up. Hmm. Now, David's father is Jewish, and uh, David tried and tried to share the Messiah with him. Uh, no success at all. Uh, but one day, when David had pretty much given up, you had an encounter about your dad. Tell me about it. Yeah, that. I was at this youth camp, and the, the man there said, let's pray for a burden for souls. How many would like a burden for your relatives? I said, oh, that's me. I'm tired of praying for my dad. Eight years. He doesn't want it. I don't want to bother him with it. I don't want to have to pray and have a burden. So I come up to pray anyway. Okay, God, give me a burden, a bigger burden for my dad. And, and then I get taken to hell. I see hell. I see him burning in hell, flames burning his body, nonstop, but he doesn't die. He looks at me in the vision and says, David, why did you stop praying for me? I was almost there. Hmm. And I, I was weak. I felt so heavy. And then a voice said to me, pray for him right now because he may not have long to live if he doesn't get saved. The devil will try to take him. So I began weeping and, and crying for his soul. God, please save my father. You know, Dad, come to Jesus. Come to Yeshua. Uh, you know, every, whatever I was praying, it was, just, it was like intercession, travail, groaning. That hour, a lady, a little lady knocks on the door of my dad's house, leads him to the Lord. While I was getting the vision of hell, simultaneously, he received the Jewish Messiah. And speaking of his dad, David just had some meetings in Hollywood. And uh, what happened to your father's hair? My dad's hair, besides the fact that he brought people, Jewish people, every night of the three nights Jewish people got saved, the ones he brought, his hair, he was bald on top, his hair began to grow, and his white hair began to turn black. Talk about a sign and wonder. But, you know, I'm seeing the same thing that you just described. And when I was a brand new believer in the early 70s, mm. I saw that. I saw genuine Jewish revival. I saw Jewish people coming to the Lord every week in our Messianic Jewish congregation. And then after a couple of years, it just stopped. What do you sense is going on? There's a total shift right now in the spirit worldwide in the USA, in Israel, around the world. I've never seen Jewish people so wide open to the Lord. Even relatives that I've known for years that just never would budge 30, 40 years, suddenly they're wide open begging for God to visit them and Yeshua visits them, they get saved. Uh, Jewish lawyers, people in Hollywood, there's a huge hunger now to know the Jewish Messiah. And you know something else that when David talks about the glory, many times people have visitations to heaven uh, but the one that happened in Israel the, I mean with two people tell me about that we've had that several times we went to Bethel and the Bible says Genesis 28 this is the gate of heaven so we like going there because it's an open gate and we lay on the floor someone plays worship and we close our eyes and just see if God will visit us or show mm -hmm. us a picture or a vision and many people begin to weep and they had been taken to heaven corporately in the spirit realm their bodies were there, but they saw heaven when they were closing their eyes and as if they were there. And two people said, oh, I went to heaven too. And I talked to one girl, what did you see in heaven? Oh, Jesus talked to me. In fact, she, that girl over there was with me. And what did, what did you talk about together in heaven? What did Jesus tell you? I said, hold on. Then we interviewed the other girl and same exact story. They hadn't talked to each other and they, it was a real thing. They both went to heaven, both had visitation with Jesus and they both came back. So it was amazing to hear that people could not just get a heavenly encounter, but corporate heavenly encounters. Hmm. Now, I'm going back to your dad with his hair. I, th I think that is so phenomenal. Um, I know this happens often. Have you ever seen hair grow almost before your eyes? This week, we saw it Sunday night, hair begin to grow right there in the meeting in Florida. A guy comes up and he's crying and he can hardly talk. Your hair's growing. And he said, and you can see a little bit of hair that had begun to grow. And a guy runs him and shows me his before picture, because someone actually took a picture of his head as they were looking to see if he would get hair. And it was bald, I mean, the scalp. And all of a sudden, afterward, he runs up, and, and we're, as we're watching, oh yeah, we can see some hair. We're watching it grow more and more and more. Everyone starts screaming, oh my gosh, look, the hair's growing. And everyone just freaking out in a good way. He had hair growth. We got to watch it while it grew. It was amazing. This man, and I have a before and after picture. It's just amazing. No hair at all on this scalp, and the hair begins to grow. You know, David, I believe 
that if David prays for you right now, you, wherever you are, because there is no limits in this glory realm, there's high and medium and low and low, 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 but wherever you are right now, I'm going to believe that you are going to take a mega jump. David, would you pray for people to experience the glory of God? Sure. And then if God directs you, maybe even to physical healing. Okay, great. Well, I just pray for those watching right now. If you're hungry for God's presence, His glory, the supernatural, just close your eyes right where you're at and just ask the Holy Spirit to come in. And as I, you do that, I pray right now, God, open up the windows of heaven over everyone watching, believers and non-believers. Visit people that are watching. Come, God, in your glory. Fill them. Saturate every fiber of their being, their mind, their body, their spirit, their emotions. Just fill them right now with the thick, heavy, heavy presence of the glory and presence of God right now. Just open yourself to it, and God will come. And as we're in that glory, I just see healings, miracles, body parts that need to be created. I release through creative miracles right now in Yeshua's name. Teeth that are missing, grow. Hair that's missing, grow. Cartilage that's missing, grow. Cataracts being healed, blindness being healed, a, a right arm that's paralyzed, I see strength coming back. Anything on your body that you need a healing, just even lay hands on it right now, and I declare miracles and healing, and start to move that body part and see if you can tell a difference. God's healing a lot of people right now, especially creative miracles on body parts, but healings as well. There's people here watching and they have depression. You take antidepressants. I command the spirit of heaviness, depression, and suicidal thoughts break off of you right now in Jesus' name and the peace of God that passes all understanding. As people in hospital rooms right now watching, terminally ill, I declare joy to come into you. I command cancers, tumors, die and shrink and disappear in Jesus' name. And I declare the doctor report to be completely opposite of what they just told you. All kinds of cancer, leukemia cancers, cancers of, of, of the throat, cancers of the stomach, every kind of cancer begins to die right now. Another man has a heart problem, you need a heart transplant, and God's healing your heart. The arteries are opening up right now in the name and the power of Jesus. There's a, there's a headaches, migraine headaches, excruciating pain. Part of it is physical, but the, some of you are getting it, and it's witchcraft. I bind the spirit of witchcraft off of your mind and your head and the pain to go right now in the name and the power. Oh, there's diabetes. A lot of diabetes that are watching. I command diabetes to just be completely gone. There's so many words of knowledge that I'm getting because there's probably thousands or millions of people watching, so I can't give you all the words in one program, but you don't have to get a word. You can just right now lift your hands. Let the power of God come on your physical body. Just close your eyes and see God touching your body. See a picture of that. And I see God touching that body part. Lay hands on that body part. Some of you are going to feel fire or heat on your body. And then I want you to get up and do something you couldn't do before. Oh, teeth miracles are happening right now. People that are missing teeth. Teeth grow in Jesus' name. And people with black teeth and even gray teeth from the dentist. I see gold and silver teeth, crowns and feelings that were not there before. I command teeth right now, gold and silver teeth to grow. The gold and silver is mine, says the Lord. It's in the Bible. God can give you new teeth. And you might say, well, where's gold fillings? Well, open your mouth and he'll fill it, says the Lord. <laughs> Just chew on that scripture until we figure out why he's doing it. And open your mouth. Ask people to check your mouth right now. Ask a couple people in your family. And when, you're, when they're looking in your mouth, to ask them to look carefully if it's bright. Because many times we've seen miracles of gold and silver teeth. Even in Israel we've seen this among Jewish people who they said their forefathers lost their gold teeth in World War II 50 years ago. And they're amazed that God's putting it back in as a sign and a wonder that God's still touching his people. David, as you're sharing about the glory, the presence of God is getting so strong. I want to speak something to you. Do you remember David's father? where he had the vision of his father in hell and his father saying, why did you stop praying for me? Well, that vision could be for you. Do you know the Messiah? Do you know that he died for your sins? Do you know that if you ask for forgiveness, your sins will be washed away? Nothing will be separating you from the love of God. 
Do you know that if you speak out loud, that you believe in your heart that Yeshua, Jesus, rose from the dead, that his life will enter you? And he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. There is a peace which is the opposite of what's going on in the world that is waiting for you. It's as if he's knocking on your door through me right now. And he's saying, I love you. I don't want you to keep going through the hard things you're going through. I want to take your burden. Give me your burden. Make Jesus your Lord. Say, Yeshua, forgive me. I make you my Lord. Enter me. Live in me now.